Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do a Friday Reads, just check in with what I'm currently reading as well as show you some of the books I have out from the library at the moment uh, because I have quite a quite a pile that I got out yesterday. Um, so if you have seen my goals video for this year, you'll know that uh, one of my goals is to read one book at a time slash a few books at a time. Um, basically, I wanted to move into trying to focus more on uh, fewer books at a time because I felt like that would help me in um, sort of calming me down and, and making me more focused on what I was reading. Um, but I realized that I would probably not realistically read just one book at a time most of the year because I have buddy reads going on or other longer term reading projects or other practical reasons um, that didn't allow that to happen. So actually most of the year so far I have been reading one, um, one or two books, but currently I am sort of reading four books, but I'll get to that. So my main, um, I would say my main book at the moment and my main non-fiction book at the moment is A Ghost in the Throat by Do Doirian Nigriofa. Uh, this is an Irish author and this is a memoir. I think um, it very centrally talks about pregnancy and motherhood, but also about literature and poetry. So this author is sort of recounting her experiences as a mother of young children as well as talking about her connection to a particular poet. Uh, so I'm actually reading this for the Booktube Prize. I was assigned the gr Group E for nonfiction, so I will not share my thoughts until I have finished all of them and the round is over. Uh, which will be at the end of March, so I will share th thoughts about the books I read in April. But this is the first one I'm getting to. I'm waiting for the other ones to arrive in the mail. And then for my main non-fiction book at the moment, I have Song of Lavino and Song of the Coal by Okot B. P. Bitek. This is a Ugandan author and I'm reading this for Invisible Cities in February. So I'm currently, I haven't even gotten into the actual book of this, I'm just reading the introduction because it starts off with an introduction and then some biography about the author and then um, about the book itself. So it's just the actual book doesn't start until here. Uh, so it's quite a, a chunky introduction and then um, the book itself is uh, two parts but the, the, the second part is very short. Uh, but it's a very interesting book. It is, uh, so j for just from reading the introduction and being introduced to the text itself, it is basically poetry or songs of writing and one of the parts, the, the major part of the book is um, written in was re originally written in Akoli and was translated into English um, whereas the other one is originally written in English um, and yeah so I'm, I'm really curious about this one just from reading the introduction and getting some context to the text itself but I'll definitely talk more about this in my February wrap-up. And then uh, for a long-term project that I will be reading for the foreseeable future, and that is one of the reasons I have several going on at the same time, uh, this is Hell or Inferno by Dante, and the reason I'm currently reading this is because of Alina's book club. Um, so I will link her, uh, according to Alina on Instagram, I will link her account below, but she basically started very recently a Dante book club where we read uh, one canto per, per week um, and you can sign up to a newsletter where she talks about the canto itself and some of her thoughts and observations and I just find it to be a really interesting and fun experience to have uh, that every Sunday. So this, uh, as I said, I will be reading along with the book club and because it's just one canto per week, it will take me some time. Then the last of my currently reading is what I mentioned with uh, reading several books at the time because of practical reasons and that is because I am reading by way of introduction uh, by A. Milne. So uh, I mentioned, I think, 
I feel like I mentioned in, in one video or another that I've been reading Year In Year Out by A.A. Milne uh, in January and that was an essay collection. This one is uh, mostly introductions that he's written for several for different authors and different uh, volumes and I think later in this book there is his essays on, on reading in life, uh, on reading and writing more generally, but the beginning portion of this book is just him, him co commenting on other authors. Um, but because this is such a vulnerable copy, this is a first, first edition, I think. Um, so it's quite an old copy and it's very vulnerable, so I don't dare to transport it anywhere. So I've been just reading an essay here and there just to uh, read it when I'm sitting in a situation where I feel like it's safe to read this. But then, as I said, I have a pile of books that I've got out from the library. First of all, I have some poetry collections. I also mentioned in my reading goals video for this year that uh, one of my reading goals was to read more poetry and um, I decided that it would be safest to, to explore poetry through my library so I don't have to commit to a particular author or, or a volume if I'm not enjoying the style. Um, so what I have as an option is The Tradition by Jericho Brown and I think this touches on identity and race. Um, it says, beauty abounds in Jericho Brown's daring new poetry collection despite the evil that pollutes the everyday. The tradition questions why and how we become accustomed to terror. Um, from mass shootings to rape to murder and unarmed people by police, Brown interrupts complacency, complacency by locating each emergency in the garden of the body where living things grow and wither to, or survive. Uh, so it sounds really interesting and with all of the poetry that I'm trying out, I've read samples if I found anything. But I think this is one I've seen around and there that is one of the reasons that I was intrigued to try it out. Um, and the other one I have in English is Calling a Wolf a Wolf by Kave Akbar. And the, one of the main reasons I was interested in this is because the author is Iranian. This one says, tracking the joys and pains of the path through addiction and wrestling with desire, inheritance and faith. Calling a Wolf a Wolf is the darkly sumptuous debut from award-winning poet Kave Akbar. These are powerful, intimate poems of thirst for alcohol, for other bodies, for knowledge, and for life. I have one non-fiction book out uh, from the library, and that is Negro Land, a memoir by Margot Jefferson. I've been wanting to read this one for ages, and I think I've actually borrowed this one from the library before, uh, but I've been really in the mood for memoirs lately, like in the last few months, I've been really in, in the mood for uh, memoirs, and I don't actually own a lot of memoirs unread on my shelves uh, so that was one of the reasons that I was looking for things that I could potentially borrow uh, from my library and this is one of the ones that um, sounded like something I would want to read in the near future um, and this one is about race and about um, class and um, sort of the overlap of those two things. I think this one talks about being well off uh, in within a community that is um, discriminated against. Uh, so basically being well off as black. As I said, I've been meaning to read this one and this author for ages and I think this author is also coming out with a new book this year. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I would really love to try this one out. And then I have Lastly, I have three uh, translated fiction books. So first we have Catch the Rabbit by Lana Bastasik. And this, one of the reasons that I was drawn to this was actually that the author has translated this one herself, um, which I think is a fairly unusual thing. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that already made me curious about this. Catch the Rabbit tells the story of how we place the ones we love on pedestals and then wait for them to fall off, how loss m marks us indelibly and how the traumas of war echo down the years. Translated into English by the author. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of intrigued because of that and because the book itself sounded interesting as well. Uh, so yeah, so there's that. And then uh, the, the other book is actually also translated by the author, but this author originally wrote in English before they started writing in Italian. Uh, so it is Whereabouts by Jim Balahiri. So I think this was originally written in Italian. Um, 
let's see. Written in Italian and translated by the author, which is quite unusual as well, um, which intrigues me. But the, the main reason I was interested in this one is that I read um, Jimba Lahiri's memoir about learning Italian and, and I really liked it. In other words, I think it's called. Um, I read that quite a few years ago and I still think about it and yeah, there was something about that book that really uh, connected with me. Uh, and so I was curious about reading her Italian writing um, and reading more of her fiction as well because I haven't read any of her fiction yet. Whereabouts is an inquisitive inquisitively nuanced portrait of urban solitude, one that shimmers with beauty and possibility. It is also a thrilling departure for Jim Balahiri, her first novel written in English as well as the first she has self-translated a full-length work. The reader will find the qualities that make Lahiri's work so beloved, deep intelligence and feeling, rich, richly textured physical and emotional landscapes and aquatics of dislocation. Uh, so yeah, sounds great. And then the last one I have is one I mentioned in my anticipated releases of the autumn, I think, of translated books. And that is Love in the Big City by Sung Young Park. And I remember that this was, um, this was a queer uh, fiction book. Um, and I remember the description of this made it sound like a lot of fun. Like it was um, kind of a party scene uh, situation. Love in the Big City is the funny, transportive, surprising, and poignant English language debut of Sang Young Park, one of Korea's most exciting young writers. And I think this was translated by Anton Hur, yes, um, which is another reason I was interested in it. A brilliantly written novel that takes us into the glittering nighttime of Seoul and the bleary eyed morning after with both humor and emotion is a right portrait of millenni millennial loneliness as well as the abund abundant joys of queer life. So those are all of the books that I am currently reading and what I could potentially read in the near future based on my library pile. Uh, I would love to know if you've read any of these books, what you are reading this Friday or this weekend. I hope you're doing well and you're taking care of yourselves and I will talk to you soon. Bye!